Hey there, I'm your host Les Sawi, and in today's video I will show you how to have multiple weapons on your player character. So behind me over here we have an axe, a sword and a gun. So if I get close I can pick each of these up just like so. And if I go to press 1 we can take out our weapon and we of course have a attack animation. I have a single montage for each of these just to show you that it is possible. But of course you can customize this to a way higher extent. So there we have our axe animation. Let's put this back and let's take out our gun. And of course, we have our gun animation. So I'm going to cover all three of these in this video. And with all that said, let's begin. First of all, we are going to need a few animations. Now, the ones you saw at the very beginning, I got them off Mixamo. So feel free to pop down here and download whatever you deem is necessary. Now, the second thing, we will need a gun, a sword and an axe. So I'll link these down below. But if you have your own, then use that. And with that said, let's go back to Unreal. Once you're back in Unreal Engine, import all of your assets. So my sword's over here, my pistol is over here, and same goes for the axe. Now, it is important that whenever you're importing, so for example, I have my sword over here, select the skeletal mesh, otherwise you won't be able to follow what I'm doing in this video. So just have the skeletal mesh selected. Now, I can cancel since mine's already imported. I'll get a error message, but anyway. Let's go into our montages. So these would be under my player animations. And over here, you want your attack montages, which I have in my separate folder. So you'd have your animations and just convert them to montages. And then we would have our draw and our sheet montages. So I'll go, go over one of these with you. For example, if we have our draw montage, we don't have any sheet montage and that's our only animation. I'll show you how to create the sheet. So select your animation do a duplicate and let's call this sheet axe and if i go inside i can simply go over in the rate scale and do minus one which will reverse the animation so there you go it was that easy now we have a sheet animation so for each of the draw animations and the sheet animations you want to right click and create an anim montage and in the anim montage it's very important that from the second tab from below you add a montage notify because this will determine when the weapon is going into the player's hands so i know that for me uh for the sheet about 18 is good but just play around with it and see what's looking best for you so do this essentially for all of your montages except the attack ones so let's hit x and then let's go and create a few input actions so we can actually take the weapons out attack and pick the weapon up so in our input in the actions let's create three uh, input actions to be able to draw our weapons so input action i'll call it draw one we can simply duplicate this and call this draw two and if we duplicate it once more it'll be draw three so that's our weapon one weapon two and weapon three next let's create an input action for our attack so ia underscore attack just like so and if you want more attack buttons just create more but i'll be using a single one and one more thing let's right click and go to input action once again and we need our pickup so ia underscore pick up so once you have that just save this and let's go into our imc in which we need to create these mappings so over here i'll find my pickup which i'll have on the f key then we can create one more which will be my attack. So I'll say left mouse button. There we go, the attack. And at the very end, let's do our draw one, draw two, and we need the draw three. So the way I'm going to do it is for my draw one, this will be my sword. For my draw two, this will be my axe. And for my draw three, this will be my gun. So I'll just have it one, two, and three. But of course, do it whatever is comfortable for you. So with that said, let's save and exit. Next, let's go into our player skeleton. So over here, inside of our player skeleton, we need to create a few sockets so our player can hold the item and of course, so we can store it. So for that, um, let's type in right hand. And if we type in right, we should have a hand. And over here, you can see I actually have a socket for the gun, for the ax and for the item, which is actually the sword. So I'll go over creating one with you. So we can right click on the right hand, add socket, and this socket I could name something like example, just to show you. 
And if I search, for example, it should come up for me right there. And if we right click on it, we can add a preview asset, which could be the sword. And of course, it's a little bit big. So if I select the sword in the relative scale, we can type in 0 0.2. Just play around with this. And then, of course, this will scale our sword. Now over here, if I select it once more, I can then rotate it so it's properly in our player's hand. But to get a better visual, we can type in an animation and we can pause it and we can preview how this would look inside of our animation. So of course, this is not proper. Um, so let's rotate it the correct way and we can move it. So this is kind of the idea. You just play around with it and get it uh, how you like it. So this would be for the hand. And then of course you'd have it for the back. So if I were to do it on the back, let's type in spine. And if I selected spine one, for example, or let's do spine, yeah, spine one. So if I wanted the weapon on the back, I would do the exact same. At right click, add a socket, and let's call let's call this socket example two. So if I look then for example two, we can see it right there. We do the same thing. Right click, add preview asset, add the sword. And of course, we need to scale this once again, 0 0.2. And let's paste this everywhere. And then of course, you'd select it and you would rotate it the proper way and just play around with it, how it would look on when the weapon is stored. So yeah, with that said, that's pretty much it. Let me just delete these. I don't need the example. And if I delete example one, okay. So next, let's go into creating our weapon. Back inside of our content drawer, let's right click, go to blueprint class and select actor. Now for this, I'll call it BP underscore item. But of course, you can call it whatever you want. Now inside of this, it's very important. We create a skeletal mesh, which will serve as an item. So I'll call it item. And if you select self, we also need a collision to give the player a way to interact with this. Now I'll select the sphere collision and I'll rename it to collision as well. Now let's go to our construction script. And over here, we want to create a new variable, which we can call our item model or our weapon model. And in the type, select skeletal mesh, since that's what we are using. And you want the object reference. Now make sure this is instance editable, since we will be editing this inside of our world. So just have the eye over there. Now select your item, get it, and from the item do set a skeletal mesh asset. And for the new mesh, you just want to drag the variable we created. So get it and plug it into there. So what this simply means is if we compile and save and I put my item inside of the world, we'd be able to decide how this looks like. So for example, I want my axe, which is a little too big. So we can select the item over here. And let's say 0 0.06 is a good value. And the reason I know this, because I played with this. So let's do that for all of these. And there you go, a normal looking size asset. And if I were to duplicate this item, then of course I don't want the ax, I want the, the sword, for example. We can simply change it to the sword and it's a little bit too small. So select the item once again, and let's do 0 0.2. And let's copy, paste this like so. And there we go, we have our sword. Of course, it's rotated the wrong way, but we can simply change that like so. Now, let's say I also want my gun. So to do that, we could duplicate, duplicate this once more. And for our gun, I could do uh, the gun asset, so skeletal mesh. And for the item, let's do 1.6. And let's copy this and paste it for each of these like that. So there we go. We have our gun and of course the collision is a little small for my liking so what we can do about that let's go back inside of our item viewport select the collision and make it 60 i think that's pretty good so let's just see how that looks like uh i can't play because there's an error there but that's fine so it's looking pretty good so with that said let's save and let's go back into the event graph the next thing we need to do, we need to create a Blueprint interface so our player can interact with the item. So do a right click, go to Blueprint and select Blueprint interface. Now for this, I'll call it BPI underscore pickup. That's fine. And we can simply save. 
and that's all we need to do with this so go inside of our player so this would be player bp underscore brady for me so essentially whatever your character's name is now inside of here we need to go to class settings and add our blueprint interface which we called pickup so we can uh, compile that and i never actually named it so that's my bad let's go back and let's name it something so this function over here let's give this a name i'll call it picking up like so so let's go back into our player and we can double click on this which will pop on our event graph and from here let's do for each loop with break let's do from array get overlapping actors and for the class filter type in actor and select that then for array element do does implement interface and then get a branch so if it does we are going to do the picking up function so on true actually uh, from the array element do picking up so essentially whatever you call your function plug that into there and now at the very end we will reset this so we can put that into the break and i can make it look a lot better by rerouting these cables or these links so that's our picking up function and next we want to get our input action which we did and this was also called ia underscore pickup and from here we can simply do picking up like so and let's comment this code and call it our pick up system so that's looking good and since we are inside of our player character let's go to our viewport and we can add these assets to the bones we create so over here select the mesh add a skeletal mesh and let's call this sword now we can do a duplicate i believe so if i select that we can duplicate and let's call this our gun now we can duplicate this once again and let's call this our axe now select your sword and essentially what you want to do over in the skeletal mesh select the sword asset and you can see it's in the wrong place so go into the parent socket and search for the socket you put your sword in so for me this was called back weapon and if I do it, we can see it goes to the correct place. So since that's correct, we can then remove this. So we don't want to begin the game with our sword already on the back. So let's do this for our gun. So let's select our gun, which is over here. And for the parent socket, I called it the gun holster. So if we type that in, it should be here. And of course, this is looking good for us too. So let's remove the skeletal mesh asset. And if we select our axe, just to double check, select the axe, and this is too big as well. So in the parent socket, I called mine low back weapon, and that's looking good. So we can also remove the skeletal mesh asset. So that's our bones pretty much good on our player. Next, let's design a system so we can actually equip this to our player. So over here, I'm going to call my draw function. Or my draw input action which is draw one and from here i'm going to create a branch to check if the weapon is equipped or not so for the for the condition i'm going to create a variable which we can call equipped like so and let's drag that into there so if our weapon is equipped we want to put it away if it's not equipped we want to uh, take it out so from here i'm going to do a play montage and for the skeletal mesh asset, let's select our mesh. So our character's mesh, plug that into here. Now for the asset to play or for the montage to play, we want our sheet. And since this is our draw one, I want my sheet sword. Now let's duplicate this, plug it into false. And this time we want to draw instead of sheet. So let's select draw sword, which we have here. And then remember the non notify montages we created yeah so with that we will drag out from here and do attach component to component and let's just select mesh that's fine so the mesh will go into the parent like so and for our target we would have our weapon so since this is one let's drag our sword connect that there 
and for the socket name just have whatever you called yours once again i called my back weapon just like that and for the location rule do snap to target for each of these and let's duplicate this and on notify begin we would have that there and what we want to do now is select the bone that our player would be holding the weapon in so for example for me this was called right hand uh, item now you won't have this you'll have your own name that you created so just watch out for the names that they are collect, uh, correct in the player skeleton so basically now we need to get our equipped do a set so if our weapon is sheeted then of course this won't be equipped so this will be false but if our weapon is out then of course this will be true so make it true now one more thing we can do since we would be using the same attack button let's create another variable which we can call something like a weapon weapon slot whatever you see reasonable now this will be our integer and we can drag this out and we can set it so when our when our weapon is sheeted this essentially will be zero but if our weapon is drawn since this is the sword i will set this as one and you'll understand why i'm doing this in a little moment so we can literally do a comment and call this our draw sword and the process will be exactly the same for all of our true weapons so we can comment or copy paste and over here let's just rename everything so this is our draw or input action draw two like so put that into started and that's fine equipped so meshes are good but we don't want the sword anymore we want the axe so let's get our axe plug that into there and we can copy that and plug that into here now for the sockets this is going to be different once again so instead of back weapon which was my sword i'll have low back weapon which was my axe and for the right hand this was not item but was called axe and now this will be number two and everything else is good so let's copy this once more and do it for our gun so this will be on our button tree so let's call draw tree put that into started and okay let's have a look what's next so our axe it won't be our axe anymore our axe would be our gun because this is the number three so let's copy that paste it over here plug that into there and once again the socket name won't be low back weapon but it will be called our gun holster if i'm correct i am i hope i'm correct and then for the socket name this wasn't axe this was called gun and this now will be tree so let's just turn that into tree and that's looking good for me so let's save that the next thing we should do is decide when we can attack with what weapon so in order to do that we need to call our attack in production which i have i have to search for it there we go and over here i need to check which weapon is drawn so that's the reason we have the weapon slots so let's get it and if this is equal equal to one then of course we're going to play r1 if it's equal to two we'll play r2 and so on so this will be two and we can paste that and this is going to be three so i'll show you how this is going to work so let's press b to get a branch uh, b and left mouse button and if this is equivalent to one if this is true then our player is going to play a montage and this montage will be of our sword attack just remember to have your skeletal mesh so my my character mesh will go here and for the montage to play I can do something like attack one right uh, it doesn't really matter I just want to show you that um, it works then if this is false if it is not weapon one we will check if it is weapon two so the same process would go so instead of actually copying these I can just copy all of this paste it put it here so if this is going to be false we'll put it into here and now it's going to check if it is weapon two so and our weapon two would be our axe so let's just select a different montage to play that would be specific to our axe and now if this is good if this is false let's copy paste uh, we would play our 
gone. So let's put that here. And for the montage to play, we would have our gone, gone play one. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. And let's compile, save, and go back to our item. Back inside of our item, we can delete three of these. And we want to go to our class settings and select our blueprint interface, which we called pick up. And if we double click on it, it'll show up over here, like so. Now we can create our macro. So this will decide our slot rules. Where should the weapon go? So over here in the macros, create a plus and let's call it something like a slot. And inside of the input, let's create an execution, which will be called in. And then for our output, let's create another execution, which will be called, which will be called out. And from here, what we can do, uh, let's go back into the event graph and I quickly want to cast to my player character. So this will be Brady for me and whatever your character's name is for you. For the object, we will get player character and I want to promote this to a variable. So promote this to a variable and let's call it Brady ref. And the reason I want this is because I'll be using the reference in our macro. So let's go into our slot, our macro slot. And over here, I want to create a branch. Now for the condition, I want to create a variable, which we can call slot, or let's call, let's rename our macro and call it weapon slot. And our macro will be now called slot. And this I want to be a integer. So let's get it. And if this is equal equal to, let's say one, put that into here. So if this is true, we are going to attach a weapon, attach component to component item. Let me drag this out a little bit. So then essentially our parent is going to be Brady reference and let's get mesh, which is our character's mesh. So this will go into the parent. Now this item will go into the target and this item will also go into set. So from Brady reference, we want to do set sword, which was my uh, skeletal asset, like so. And this will go into the sword. Look that there. And that's looking good for me. So next, if this is not equal to one, we just want to uh, replicate this process. So I could literally do this. We don't need that. I can copy, paste. And over here, let's do the same thing. So if this is false, we will go into true. And from here, I'm going to not put it on my back. Actually forgot this. So if this is our sword, it would be called back weapon because that's the name of my socket. And if it is not uh, the sword, so if it is the ax, right, this would be on my low back weapon. And I hope I'm spelling these all correct. Otherwise stuff won't work. And now if it is not the ax, it is the gun. So let's do one more check. We put that here. So if this is false, right? This is false. It's not the sword and it's not the ax. Then of course, uh, let's check if this is our gun. And for the socket name, I called this a gun holster. Now, one more thing. I forgot to change each of these. So of course, this will be the sword, that's correct, but this won't be the sword. So let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this. So this will be our axe. So get or set axe rather like so. And for the very last thing, you would set your gun. So the item will go into axe. And here we would do set gun. Scroll all the way down, get our gun or set I mean. And this will go into the gun, like so. And let's compile and save that. Now let's go to our event graph. And over here, I want to do a delay of maybe 0 0.01, 0 0.001. And the macro we created, let's get it. And we have the in and we have the out. So let me just check. Yeah, I forgot to connect the out. So let me do that very quickly, like so. Let's compile, save again, and in the event graph, this out will go out. And let's do a print string. So this would say, 
weapon picked up. And let's just give this a quick run to see if this is working. So if I go and stroll about and I press F, this is not working. So let's see why. I actually forgot to tell you to change the slot variable to be instance editable. And the reason for that is we'll be changing it inside of our world. And then over here, we want to change these to be snap to target. I also forgot to do that. So just do it for each of these. And after this, I'll show you one more thing, which I messed up. So snap to target, snap to target, snap to target. Okay, so you can compile and save. That's completely okay. But inside of our player character, I never actually said which interface to um, check for, which is our BPI pickup. So once you fix these mistakes, I should be able and select a slot value over here. So this is our sword, which is going to be one, our axe, which is going to be two, and our gun, which is going to be three. So with that said, if we save and go to play, I should be able to pick up my gun, which goes there, my axe, which goes there, and my sword. So if I take out my sword, I should be able to attack. So there we go, that's fine. Now, if I take out my axe, I should be able to do the same thing. There we go, a different attack. And if I take out my gun, we should be able to shoot this thing. So let's see, can we? And we cannot. And I bet I forgot to add in a animation or something. So let's just go see what I did wrong. Uh, da -da -da. Over here, if this is equal to three, there we go. Of course, I forgot something. So that's my bad. And now if we go and pick up the gun, which was three, we should be able to play that animation. And yes, we can. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a little bit of a longer video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.